Welcome to the Eastern Sib Podcast at the Historian's Eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are released, click the bell icon. Mozi was a Chinese philosopher during the Hundred Schools of Thought period in the early Warring States period. A book named after him, the Mozi, contains material ascribed to him and his followers. Born in what is now Ting Zhao, he founded the school of Moism, which argued strongly against Confucianism and Taoism. His philosophy emphasized self-restraint, self-reflection, and authenticity rather than obedience to ritual. During the Warring States period, Mohism was actively developed and practiced in many states, but fell out of favor when the legalist Qin dynasty came to power. During that period, many Mohist classics are by many believed to have been ruined when the emperor Shi Huangti supposedly carried out the burning of books and the bearing of scholars. The importance of Moism further declined when Confucianism became the dominant school of thought during the Han Dynasty, until mostly disappearing in the middle of the Western Han Dynasty. Mozi is known by children throughout Chinese culture by the Thousand Character Classic, which records that he was saddened when he first saw the dying of pure white silk, which embodied his conception of austerity simplicity, and chastity. For the modern juvenile audience of Chinese speakers, the image of his school and its founders were popularized by the animated TV series, The Legend of the Chin. Most historians believe that Mozi was a member of the lower artisan class who managed to climb his way to an official post. Like Confucius, Mozi was known to have maintained a school for those who desired to become officials serving in the different ruling courts of the warring states. He was schooled in Confucianism in his early years, but he viewed Confucianism as being too fatalistic and emphasizing too much on the elaborate celebrations of funerals, which he felt were detrimental to the livelihood and productivity of common people. He managed to attract large followings during his lifetime, which rivaled that of Confucius. His followers, mostly technicians and craftspeople, were organized in a disciplined order that studied Mozi's philosophies and technical writings. His passion was said to have been for the good of the people, without concern for personal gain or even his own life or death. His tireless contributions to society were praised by many, including Confucius's disciple Mencius. Shang Taiyan said that in terms of moral virtue, even Confucius and Lozi cannot compare to Mozi. Mozi traveled from one crisis zone to another throughout the ravaged landscape of the warring states, trying to dissuade rulers from their plans of conquest. Though Mozi's school of thought faded into obscurity after the warring states period, he was studied again two millennia after his death. As almost nobody had copied the text during the last 2,000 years, there was much difficulty in deciphering them. As a result, Moism became the most difficult philosophy within the hundred schools of thought to study. Both the Republican revolutionaries in 1911 and the communists saw in him a surprising modern thinker who was stifled early in Chinese history. Mozi's moral teachings emphasized self-reflection and authenticity rather than obedience to ritual. He observed that we often learn about the world through adversity. By reflecting on one's own successes and failures, one attains true self-knowledge rather than mere conformity to ritual. Mozi exhorted people to lead a life of asceticism and self-restraint, renouncing both material and spiritual extravagance. Like Confucius, Mozi idealized the Xia dynasty and ancients of Chinese mythology, but he criticized the Confucian belief that modern life should be patterned on the ways of the ancients. After all, he pointed out, what we think of as ancient was actually innovative in its own time, and thus it should not be used to hinder present-day innovation. Mozi did not believe that history necessarily progresses. Mozi tried to replace what he considered the long-entrenched Chinese overattachment to family and clan structures with the concept of impartial caring or universal love. In this, he argued directly against Confucians. Mozi, in contrast, agreed that people in principle should care for all people equally, a notion that philosophers and other schools found absurd as they interpreted this notion as implying no special amount of care or duty towards one's parents or family. In addition, Mozi argued that benevolence comes to human beings as natural as fire turns upwards and water turns downwards, provided the people in positions of authority illustrate benevolence in their own lives. Mozi also had a belief in the power of ghosts and spirits, although he was often thought to have only worshipped them pragmatically. 
In fact, in his discussion of ghosts and spirits, he remarked that even if they did not exist, communal gatherings for the sake of making sacrificial offerings would play a role in strengthening social bonds. Furthermore, for Motsi, the will of heaven was that people should love one another and that mutual love by all should bring benefit to all. Therefore, it was everyone's interest that they love others as they love themselves. Heaven should be respected because failing to do so would subject one to punishment. For Motsi, heaven was not the amoral, mystical nature of the Taoist. Rather, it was a benevolent moral force that rewarded good and punished evil. Similar in many ways to the Abrahamic religions, Motsi believed that all living things live in a realm ruled by heaven, and the heaven has a will which was independent from and higher than the will of man. Thus he writes that universal love is the way of heaven, since heaven nourishes and sustains all life without regard to status. Motsi's ideal of government, which advocated a meritocracy based on talent rather than background, also followed his idea of heaven. Most ethics are considered a form of consequentialism, sometimes called state consequentialism. Moism ethics evaluates the moral worth of an action based on how it contributes to the stability of the state through social order, material wealth, and population growth. Motsi tended to evaluate actions based on whether they provided benefit to people, which he measured in terms of enlarged population, a prosperous economy, and social order. Like other consequentialist theories, Motsi thought the actions should be measured by the way they contributed to the greatest societal good for what we have agreed to in a social contract. With this criterion, Motsi denounced things as diverse as offensive warfare, expensive funerals, and even music and dance, which he saw as serving no useful purpose. Mohism was suppressed under the Qin and died out completely under the Han, which made Confucianism the official doctrine. However, many of its ideals were dissolved into the mainstream of Chinese theology thought since both Confucians such as Zunzi and Taoists such as Zhangji express sympathy for Mozi's concerns. The influence of Mozi is still visible in many Han works written hundreds of years later. In modern times, Moism was given a fresh analysis. Sun Yat-sen used universal love as one of the foundations of his idea of Chinese democracy. More recently, Chinese scholars under communism have tried to rehabilitate Mozi as a philosopher of the people, highlighting his rational, empirical approach to the world as well as his proletarian background.